Sports anchor Grant Becker kicks off our team coverage tonight. He is live in Iowa City. Grant. Yeah, Chris, voluntary workouts began for the Iowa football program today, and we all expected that would be our top sports story on June 8th. Instead, we continue to follow the quickly developing story about a culture of racism inside the Iowa football program. The story started Friday when former Hawkeyes took to Twitter to share their accounts of racial mistreatment, and the stories began coming fast and furious Friday night. By 6 o'clock Saturday evening, strength and conditioning coach Chris Doyle had been placed on administrative leave while Iowa launched an independent review of his conduct. And while many of the players clarified that Kirk Ferentz wasn't the problem, we're left to ask the question, how did he miss all of this happening in his program? Clearly there's not, not enough candid conversation or the players haven't felt safe enough to, um, you know, to visit freely or give me feedback. And again, you know, to complain we're working too hard, that's one thing, but the line is, you know, feel unrespected and, uh, you know, maybe feel like they were demeaned. Uh, that, that's, those are the things all across our program. We just, we have to make sure we do our absolute best. Ferens followed that up by saying he owes it to his players and to Chris Doyle to complete a thorough investigation. We'll have plenty more on this coming up later in sports and throughout the week as this story continues to develop. Live in Iowa City, Grant Becker, Iowa's News Now Sports. Monticello is coming off a 6-4 and four season with a trip to the playoffs, and the Panthers are ready to push for more this fall. So far, they're 3-0 with a pair of nail-biter wins and looking like one of the teams to beat in 2A. Back at Dean Nelson Field for the first time in a month tonight, they were hosting Tipton. On the Panthers' first drive after a fumble recovery, they would strike through the air. Luke Lambert hits Caleb Saucer on the quick slant, and quickly Monticello goes up 7-0. This one was a bit of a defensive struggle, early clock winding down in the half. Nine seconds before the break, Lambert scrambles, and he's going to chuck a Hail Mary, and the big fella comes down with it. Justin Recker hauls it in to put Monty up 17-0 right before the half. Very first drive of the second half, and the Panthers are driving again. Lambert goes deep to Tyler Lundsman. He loses one defender, stiff arms another, and he is in. Monticello pulls away. They take this one 37-8. That's your final. Solon looking to move to 3-0 in district play tonight, taking on Vinton Shellsburg. Spartans down 3-0 in the first quarter, turning it up on defense, though, third and long. It'll be fourth and longer after Ben Cusick gets to the QB with a little help from his friends. Solon would take advantage of the field position. Early second quarter, direct snap for Jackson Ryan. And folks, he's pretty hard to tackle. It's a 33-yard tote for the senior, and that would set up the Spartans' first score of the game. Timmons fakes handoff to Ryan. Everybody bites, including myself, and it is 7-3. Solon, next drive right back to the red zone, and this time Blake Timmons is going to roll to his right, looking to make a pass. Instead, he's got a better option. He's just going to keep this one and tuck and run. Solon makes it three straight victories, 28-6. Anamosa and Makokita both sitting at one win coming into the night, and it's the Cardinals who leave it with two. Center point Urbana heads to South Tama and wins it 40-14. In Class 1A, Sigourney Kyoto gets to 5-0 with a rivalry win over Pekin, 49-0. And West Branch goes to Makokita Valley on an emotional night, and the Bears move to 3-2. Still to come on the OT, some top-notch Class A action, a top-five battle in Fairbank between two undefeated teams, Wapsie Valley and Southwind. And another battle of ranked teams as Regina hosts Lisbon. You do not want to miss this one. These are no Iowa OT. It's coming right back. The Hawkeyes opened the 2021 NCAA Championships on a torrid pace, winning 18 of their first 20 matches and eventually seeing seven wrestlers earn All-American status. Before the championship matches began, the Hawks had already clinched their first team title since 2010, but they were looking to add three individual champions to that performance. They saved 20 125 for last tonight, so first up was Jaden Ironman at 141. He found himself in sudden victory with Penn State's Nick Lee, a rematch of the Big Ten championship match, which Ironman won, but this time Lee flipped the script. He beats Ironman at his own game with the counter, and Iowa starts 0 for 1 in the finals. Up next, it was Michael Kemmerer at 174. He lost just once in the last two seasons. Another rematch from the Big Tens that the Hawks won, but this one goes to sudden victory as well, and it's the same story. Carter Storacci takes Chemdog down and hands him his only loss of the season. That means all the pressure was on one Spencer Lee to bring the Hawks an individual crown to go with that team title, and the Iowa legend just adds to his legacy. It winds up as a 7 0 decision. The only only win in the tournament that he had without bonus points, but it is the win that mattered the most. His third national title, and after the match, Lee revealed some absolutely absurd news that makes this even more impressive. 
I mean, eight, eight days ago, I tore my ACL in my other knee. I'm wrestling with no ACLs. And, uh, you know, whatever, man. I didn't want to tell anyone, because uh, F excuses. Uh, excuses are for wusses. And you know what, that was a tough turn for me. I could barely wrestle, I could barely shoot. I can't sprawl. But you know what, I believed in my coaching staff and everyone that believed in me, and here I am. So, there you guys go. You will never hear another soundbite like that. Absolutely incredible. Here's how the team standings round up. Iowa beats Penn State by 15 and a half points, despite the Nittany Lions winning four titles and the Hawkeyes bringing home just one. That shows the incredible depth of this Hawkeye squad. Iowa State finished 13th, while you and I came in 20th. And if all of that wrestling wasn't enough for you, we've got Iowa men's basketball in NCAA tournament action tonight as well. Unfortunately, due to broadcast rights, we can't show you the highlights, but Jet yeah. Beecham has more on the Hawks who are trying to avoid the madness that is owned this March. Jet? So we always have it, you know, in the weight room and we're seeing it while we're lifting, um, going in to get shakes, stuff like that. So, you know, we're always looking at it and you, it, it, we don't want that to be taken away from our our building. The it in question there is the Floyd of Rosedale Trophy, and we'll talk about college football's best trophy soon. If the Hawkeyes are going to keep Floyd in Iowa City, a key will be to throw the ball Brandon Smith's way. The last two weeks, Smith has found himself one-on-one -on -one near the goal line, and when that happens, he knows Spencer Petrus is throwing it his way. The Hawkeyes' big-time wideout was asked yesterday if anyone in the Big Ten can guard him one-on-one, -on -one, and he said respectfully, no. I feel like I'm a dangerous receiver and one-on-one um, -on -one matchups, more times than not, I'm, I'm going to come down with the ball. He's an outstanding player, um, you know, really, really good when the ball's in the air. Uh, any 50-50 ball, I have confidence in him to, to come down and, and make the play. Um, and, you know, he proves himself week in and, and week out. Rob, there were times last year where I wondered why Iowa didn't go to Brandon Smith more in the red zone. I'm sure they had good reasons, but this fall we're seeing Spencer Petras look his way first, and that seems like a pretty good idea, right? Yeah, we talk so much about and his best football is ahead of him. And we talked about confidence. That's the guy who's got it right now. Well, last week, the Hawkeyes had Tuesday off for Election Day, which made it a short week. This week, they'll play on Friday night, which makes it another short one. It's not exactly a disadvantage because both of their opponents were in the same boat. But in a year where everything has been shaken up, it's just another hurdle in the way of routine. This is obviously a short week. Uh, last week was a little bit distorted with uh, Tuesday being off, but this one is a short week calendar-wise. So... Uh, we had to turn the page quickly after uh, watching the tape on Sunday and get to get right on Minnesota. And Everything just kind of speeds up. You know, we don't have – you lose a day. So you just have to do your normal preparation, but in, in you know, six days instead of seven, or I guess five days and – whatever, one less day. I thought that was a great moment. <laughs> whatever, one less day. Rob, how much does one less day matter, particularly with it being twice in a row? This is Iowa's News Now Sports with Grant Becker. Instead of fading down the stretch, this Iowa basketball team has been heating up, winning six of its last seven entering today's regular season finale against Wisconsin. And you know the Hawks were going to get up for Jordan Bohannon and Luca Garza's senior day. Meanwhile, the Badgers have lost four or five, so two teams going in opposite directions. And Joe Wieskamp continues that trend, starting five for five from the field. And when he launches one like that, you know he's feeling it. But Wieskamp would go down shortly after that and did not return. The Hawks led by nine at the break, but it was tight near the end. Down three with 3.30 left. It's Jabo time. He stays on his feet and does what he does best. Drills a clutch three. Tie ball game. Wisconsin would take a four point lead. Just over two to play here. Garza can't get the three to go, but Keegan Murray cleans it up for the and one bucket. What a play by the freshman. It's a one point game. Then with 30 seconds to play, it's all tied up. You know what that means. Bohannon gets the ball. He'll draw the foul and shoot three free throws. Nobody better at the line. He goes three for three and puts the pressure back on Wisconsin. And on the following Badger possession, Brad Davison is called for the hook and hold. He and Kurgan, Keegan Murray exchange made free throws, and Iowa wins it 77-73. to And on senior day, Iowa's two-man senior class was just spectacular. They were doing it all today. And after the game, Gary Barta announced that Luca Garza's jersey would be retired after this season. Just minutes before that, Fran McCaffrey told Luca what was about to happen. We'll let them walk you through it. He did not know that that was going to happen. Uh, and I knew that Mr. Barty was going to ask him to speak. So I wanted him to kind of have an opportunity to collect his thoughts. I wanted him to know. He immediately you know, broke down, as you saw. 
It was a pretty emotional moment for both of us. You know, I was just really happy we won the game, and, and then for Coach to tell me that was, uh, uh, it was a surreal feeling, you know, just, you know, that, that moment uh, will be something I remember forever. You know, just time slowed down, you know, as I heard those words, it was just a, an honor. What a moment. With the Big Ten regular season wrapped up today, Iowa finishes 14-6 and in league play. That's good for third in the conference. So here's how the bracket shakes up. The Hawks don't play until Friday when they'll most likely get Wisconsin again. And about 90 minutes after the basketball game wrapped up, Iowa hit the mat for the Big Ten championship matches with six different Hawkeyes wrestling for a conference title and the team title locked in their sights. It starts at 125 where the king of college wrestling reigns supreme. This season, the question for Spencer Lee hasn't been will he win, it's how long will it take. Purdue's Devin Schroeder becomes just the second wrestler to avoid a Lee pin this season, but he doesn't even make it to the third period. It's a 21-3 tech fall. Spencer Lee starts the Hawks off with a win. He's the Big Ten Wrestler of the Year. At 133, it's Austin DeSanto against Penn State's Roman Bravo Young, the nation's second-ranked 33-pounder, and he gave DeSanto all kinds of trouble. RBY gets the 6-2 decision, handing DeSanto his first loss this season. Another Hawkeye Nittany Lion matchup at 141, Jaden Ironman in a potential national title preview against Nick Lee, and the Hawkeye takes this round. Ironman with a big takedown here for winning this one with a riding time point. While they're Big Ten champs, neither Ironman nor Lee are satisfied. To get better and better and better every day. And, you know, I'm regretting that match. It should have been way worse. But it's a point, it's a learning point. And I'm going to be a different animal come March. I'm 20 when I'm standing in that national finals ready for everybody. I mean, I won, so happy about it, I guess. Got a lot of work to do. That's Spencer Lee for you. How about three more title matches all in a row, starting with Caleb Young at 157, taking on Northwestern's Ryan Deacon. Deacon was just too much, man. He scores a pair of takedowns and never lets Young off the mat. It's a 6-0 decision, and the Hawks drop to 2-2 two two in the title matches. But the next, next up was the Bull. Down in an escape in the second period, he picks up the only takedown of the match. The double leg works to perfection, and for the third straight year, Marinelli's a Big Ten champ. Looking to make it four Hawkeye titles, Michael Kemmerer was going to work at 174. Short time in the second period. He doesn't just settle for the takedown. He picks up some back points as well. That's four points in the final 10 seconds of the period. A 7-2 decision makes Kem Dog a Big Ten champ for the first time. The Hawks are ready for what's next. I'm just happy to be alongside my guys. Uh, that's, what, that's what really matters is that team, team bonding, team camaraderie, and uh, just getting that team trophy. You know the mentality. We got work to do. We got a bigger thing coming up in two weeks, but... I'm blessed, I'm thankful, ready to move forward. And no surprise here, the Hawks are your Big Ten champs. They had it locked up after Ironman's win. There's a 35-and-a-half point gap here between the nation's top two teams.